These concepts and images, you know, at some point we have to realize how, how long are we going to play this game of protectedness, you know? Yeah, that's, it really is what it comes down to. It's really, you know, giving up the idea of protection. I mean, I know this is another one of those concepts that gets used because people are telling me, you know, oh, David, there are many, many angels around protecting us, and da 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 And then, you know, at some point, you just have to question this whole idea of protection. Like, who's getting protected? And from what? You know, you just, in the end, you just have to go all the way with it and, and give up the concept of protect, you know. That's what Jesus is teaching us in the workbook. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. What he's saying is, as long as you still believe there's something to protect, you're not going to have any safety. Because you've just made up an enemy that doesn't exist. If you're going to tr constantly try to protect yourself from this enemy, wherever you project this enemy to be, you know, it's, it's, you're not going to have peace of mind and believe in protectiveness. So, in the end, you know, protective angels and, you know, okay, I'm going to put the ball of gold light around you and, you know, this will shield you from the evil things and this and this. And, you know, eventually I had to start to question the whole idea of evil entities and evil. You know, oh. Uh, my first girlfriend, she just, oh, she got on Facebook one day. I, mean, I haven't talked to her for 10 years or anything. She goes, there is evil. You know, what? You know, it's like after 10 years, you just still, what? It's this thing of that there's somehow, there's something called evil that, that you, that's real. You know, and, and yet the whole teachings, if you follow them in, nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists, herein lies the peace of God. You know, you really, in the end, that's what you're going to have to face, It's just this very idea that there's something other than God. You know, it's, it's pretty preposterous when you really start to, to see it. Where would, if God is all, then where is some God supposed to come from? If God is the source, and the source of all, then where exactly does this ego come from? Where does evil come from? I love that part in the Course, you know, what is the ego, what the darkness was, where is it now? Nowhere. What is it now? Nothing. You know, it's described only in words, in past terms, just as like a, to expose it. But then you get down there to the to the man teacher's manual, and he's like saying, "Okay, now it's time to let's get straight about this. <laughs> You're going to have to to really see the nothingness of this. You know, we just gave it words so you could bring it up to awareness during your mind training. But but we have to get to a point where you know you start to see it's unequivocal. It can't be both ways. Uh, what was that? word that Mary Baker Eddy used one time. She had a group of students she was teaching and she, oh yeah, she, I remember she, she had a group of teaching, she's working with these students and everything and they started getting into discussions and with the spark of God in her eyes and the radiance of God just radiating through her, she looked at her students and she said, I am infallible. And a bunch of students just got up and walked out of the class. And all she was doing was teaching the truth. You know, that's all she was doing. You know, it was that's the kind of presence that raised, raises the dead. That's the kind of presence that heals the sick. That's the kind of presence that says there's no life, truth, substance, and intelligence and matter. There's no mind and matter. It can't be both ways, you know, we, it can't be that there's frail, fallible human beings, you know, and that there's the allness of God. You can't teach both things. One denies the other. You can't teach error and you can't teach truth side by side. You can't mix error with truth when Jesus is saying the truth is true and only the truth is true. 
It's so beautiful. And really, when, when we're saying about the only lesson is that you're the dreamer of the dream, it's, it's really beautiful uh, to start to really begin to open yourself and practice that one lesson. You know, really start to rivet your mind on that. Like really tell yourself, okay, this is, this is what I want to be shown. Remember, that's what I enjoyed about China. I go over, I don't know how many billion people are there. We don't even know. Billions of people, I don't know, in China. But there was this one over there that when I did a one-on-one -on -one with her, she was starting to hone in. I could feel it in her mind where she was like saying, seeing that this is the only lesson I need. To, she was voicing it to me. I, the only lesson I need to learn is that I'm the dreamer of the dream. It was precious to hear that reflected back, you know, at a, it goes so far beyond the, the teachings of philosophy and psychology and metaphysics and so on and so forth. It's just refreshing, you know, beautiful even to hear such a thing because it's, it's, it brought tears to my eyes even, even having that experience because I said, yes, yes, now just focus on that. Just really zoom in on that. Make that your daily practice, you know. Really give your mind over to that. And she was the one that started showing up as, like, we call it like the sannyasi at some of our events. Because she didn't have money, she couldn't afford to come, she couldn't pay to come in, and they had people guarding <laughs> her from coming in, but she still found a way just to pray and come back to, I'm the dreamer, I'm the dreamer still found a way to make it through, you know, to how many of our gatherings? Six out of six. Yeah. Even though there were people watching to make sure she wouldn't make it, you know, through the gates. But that's the kind of, that's what you're trying to do here is, you know, that's something you can focus on. Really give yourself over to it. It's like people, why did people even try to climb Mount Everest? Why do people even try it? Because it's the, on Earth it's the highest mountain. <laughs> they want to climb the highest mountain. We're talking spiritually. Spiritually, if the, if the only lesson to learn is that you're the dreamer of the dream, then can't you see how helpful that could be to just start to open your mind to the possibility that this is a dream, that all these characters are just reflecting everything in your mind. And like the story of the, the the basketball player who who throws the ball over his who catches the ball and just immediately just in one motion catch throws it up with the biggest smile on his face as he's heaving this thing over his head, you know, that's a dreamer of the dream look, you know. No need to to look. As they say in basketball, no rim on that shot. It was nothing but net. And it was what the world, world would call a totally blind shot. He didn't take aim. He was totally intuitive. You could see it on his face. He just caught the ball and, and launched it over his head, you know. Why not live your life like that little boy? Don't take time to catch the ball and think about it. Look around to see who you're going to pass it to. Don't be concerned whether you're going to double dribble or where you're going to move your pivot foot. You know, playing basketball, you're allowed to move one foot, but you can't move your pivot foot. You think he was thinking about a pivot foot? The guy didn't even know what a pivot foot is. He just, he took the shot. He took the ball and he flung the thing with the great glee on his face and, and make it be that quick. You know, the alternative is to get into one of these basketball games where you've got to dribble and you've got to pass the ball around and pass look for your open teammate you got to set picks you know what a pick is you got to block you got to pick you got to you got to take a sh shot from somebody else on the other team so that somebody can get free you got to set picks and you know you got to do all these things and it's just so much work, the a game of basketball. And you got to run, run, like, you, like your antelopes or something. Run. I played basketball. Run. I coached kids, too, that age. Yeah, it just was, what a forgiveness lesson. 
It just totally, I, I have no control over the world I see. You know, you coach the kids' basketball team. You, you draw it out and everything. And, but they, they, they believed in me. I believed in them. You know, we developed some kind of a, a thing and, you know, went all the way to the championship game one year. But, but it was like, it was still a lot of work. And, and when I look at this kid that just catches the ball and throws it over his head, I know I think, now that's the way to, that's the way to play basketball, you know, because it's totally in the flow of the moment. There was no thought with it at all. There was no analysis to it. There was just, it was just a, totally given. We can actually live our lives that way. Nico doesn't like this. It's too simple. It's getting too simple. And it's like, no, no. Stop!